This video has been brought to you by Learn Flutter Code, the platform that upgrades your skills as a Flutter developer. In this video, you will be able to recreate a part of the travel app design into a Flutter app with high level of accuracy. How you do this is you are going to how you are going to do this is that you are going to box up the different UI components that you see in the design and then you will also know how to lay out the different widgets or the user interface components and lastly you are going to learn about the grid view widget in order for us to you know help us make the images into a grid view this app design was created by Piyush Kumar Singh link in the description and when you look into a design as an untrained mind you may take a while to get started therefore the first thing to do is to box the different visual components so what do i mean by boxing it up well you basically draw the rectangles at any visual components you see as such like your icon buttons your text fields your text and also your images. Maybe this visual representation does not click yet. Therefore, I usually do is to lay them out. So what do I mean by that? Well, by stretching out the boxes to the same width as the other visual components, you could see on how things are able to be laid out. So in Flutter, to lay the different widgets, you will use a layout widget. Duh. So a common layout widget you use is a column. So let's go to VS Code and add in a column. So I have a simple project over here, the link in the description. And then inside our home page over here, you can see that we have a scaffold body. So what we're going to do is we are going to add in a column that has the children param. Now once we are done, so let's go back before when we stretch out the boxes. Do you see where the most widgets are aligned? Well, most of them are aligned on the left, as you can see here, represented at the yellow dots. That means for our column cross-axis alignment, it should be at the start. So the start represents the left. So let's go inside our VS Code. And then we are going to add in our cross-axis alignment with our cross-axis alignment to start. Another thing to take notice of is that the widgets are in a column that have spaces on the left and right as you can see over here represented by the solid yellow lines. That means the column must have some padding. So let's add in some padding. For the column to add padding, you can press command or control dot and then this will bring up the menu over here then you can wrap up with a padding and then at the same time we are going to wrap up the padding with a symmetric of horizontal which means left and right and then we are going to add in a padding of 30. So let's save this. Now once we have the big picture of the app, let's now zoom in to the top of the app. So the top widget that we have is a row. So the row is a layout widget that expands its width. However, if you were to see the children widgets in it, it is placed at the end or at the right side instead on the left or the start. Therefore, we need to create a row that has a main axis alignment at the end. So let's add the row inside our column children. Then we will type in a row with the children params and then at the same time with the main axis alignment dot end so let's save this so the next thing is the icon buttons so they are pretty simple the first one is a notification icon and the second one is an extension icon so let's add it inside our row widget and inside our children we're going to type icon button and then inside our icon button we are going to add the first icon which is the icons notification inside the icon widget and then at the same time we are going to add in the on pressed with the anonymous function now we are going to duplicate it by pressing alternate shift down arrow key 
and then we're going to change the second widget or the second icon button into the extension icon so now if we were to save this you could see that our icon button is at the top so now you could see that our icons are at the top however the thing is it's pretty much unclickable so what we can do is we can add in a size box with a height 60 and now if we were to save this you could see that our icon button is now reachable now once you are done with the top widgets we'll move on to the next widget however there is a space in between the top widget and the next widget therefore we are going to use my favorite widget which is called the sized box so let's add in a sized box so we can copy over here and then we can paste the sized box over here with the height of 37 let's save this so once we added the sized box now let's move on to the next widget which is a text widget right well if you see the design it has a bold text and a normal text therefore for this case we are going to use the rich text widget so let's add in a rich text widget so under our sized box with the height 37 we're going to type in text.rich so apparently this text.rich doesn't make you rich but it's just going to give you a lot more control on your styles of your texts so for the text rich widget we're gonna use a text span so inside the text span we are going to have a text welcome with a style bold so let's save this now it's pretty small what we can do is we can actually create another style for our text rich widget so we are going to place it just right underneath our text pen and then we are going to make the font size 50 so this text style over here will be like the default style for the text pens inside the text.rich widget so inside this text pen widget we can have children widgets that is also text span widgets so inside our children we are going to add another text span widget which is a text of charlie if we were to save this you can see that charlie is bold so we need to override the style widget by adding our own style with the font weight normal and now if we were to save this now charlie is a normal font weight so once we are done with the rich text the next thing is that we are going to have another sized box before our text field let's go back to our text reach over here and then we're going to add a sized box and with a height of 30. so once we are done with the sized box the next thing is we are going to add in a text field so the text field has a couple of things in it so the first thing is it has its own outline input border which is basically this whole curved border over here so let's do that so right underneath our sized box let's add in a text field and inside this text field in order for us to have an input border we're going to use the decoration params and it requires our input decoration and then inside our input decoration we will need a border and for our border we need an outline input border inside our outline input border we need a border radius and we're going to add in a border radius dot circular with the number 10 let's put a trailing comma and save this now you can see that we have a text field that has its own outline input border the next thing is the icon over here well how are we going to place our icons there well we are going to use this thing called the prefix icon param so let's go to our vs code and now we're going to add in a prefix icon under our decoration so let's add in a prefix icon with the icon widget and then we're going to use the magnifying glass icons with the size 18 save this and you could see that we have an icon search and lastly inside our text field we will have a text but this text is not ordinary text it's a hint text 
Therefore, we're going to use the hint text params. Inside your text field, you have your hint text over here. And it only needs a string. So we're going to add in the string that is search. So let's save this. And now it has a hint text. So once we are done with the text field, the next thing is we need a another sized box before the next widget or the next text widget. So we can copy this sized box right under our text field. Let's paste this over here. And the height we need is 80. So let's save this. After that, we need to create a very simple text widget and it has a string of saved places. So under our sized box, we're going to create a text widget with the string saved places and a style that has a font width of 600 and a font size of 20. So let's save this, you see the saved places. So right under our text widget, we have another sized box that's pretty small with a height of maybe 10. So let's add in that. So let's copy a sized box and let's paste it over here. And then make sure the height is 10. Save this. And for the main part of this app is the images. However, are we going to use rows and columns? Well, this is where we are done with our layout and we are going to move on to our grid view widget. So grid view widget is placing the widgets in a grid view basically, like a two by two or three by three and so forth. So we're gonna go through on how to create this thing in a grid view. So below the sized box, let's type in a grid view. And we're going to make use the constructor gridview.count. So gridview.count requires a cross axis count, which is basically the number of grids in the left to right position. So if your cross axis count is two, it will be like this. If it's three, then it will have one, two, and three. So let's add in the cross axis count of two. So let's type in cross axis count and two. And the next thing is that we will need children. So we're going to type in children and requires a list of widgets. So for the list of widgets, we're going to use images. So the images that we have are inside our image assets over here. So we have the different countries and then it has its own list over here. So we have Japan, Barcelona, Greece and Rome. Therefore, we're going to use a for in loop to loop through the different countries for our images. So type in the for in loop, remove the curly brackets and then replace the items as countries. And then for the item, we're going to name it country. Then at the same time, we are going to use the image.asset widget, which requires the string of the different images that we have in the assets images folder. And then at the same time, the name is according to the list of countries that we have over here. So now if you were to save this, let's see if it works. If you were to open your debug console, you could see that we have a vertical viewport that is given unbounded height. That means we need to constrain the height. We're going to wrap this grid view count widget with a sized box. And then we're going to add in a height of 300. So now if you were to save this, and now if you were to save this, you could see that our grid view has been created. However, I don't want to have these big spaces for these images. So how am I going to do that? I'm going to change their child aspect ratio. For the grid, it usually has an aspect ratio of one, which means it has the same height with the same width. So I'm going to change that by typing the params of child aspect ratio with the number 1.491. So if you were to save this, now it uses the aspect ratio according to the images. So the next thing is that I don't want it to be scrollable. What I will do is I will override the scroll physics by typing the physics params. And then I will type in the never scrollable physics object. And now if you were to save this, you could see that it is not moving anymore. And lastly, there is actually some padding surrounding the images. What I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the padding by typing padding and then I'm going to override it by using the H insets dot zero. And let's save this. And now you can see that the images is very close to the top over here, but it's only being separated by the size of box here. 
And lastly, we're going to add some spacing in between the different grids. So what we can do is we're going to add in a cross axis spacing and main axis spacing of 10. So let's save this and now it looks better. Congratulations, you have created or recreated the app design. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you want more of this kind of video, subscribe down below. Comment now of any designs that you want me to recreate. That's it. Stay safe and all the best. Bye-bye.